Today we are going to learn about the nose and the nasal cavity. Of course, it's a part of your respiratory system. So let's see what your nose has to do. It takes a vital role in, I would say, breathing air in and next it takes part in the olfaction. And of course, what else it does? It purifies the air we get in, right? So it moistens it, it warms it and cleans it, right? Okay, now let's see that what are its features, okay? Uh, in this diagram, you can see the external feature of the nose. This is the dorsum or nasal bridge. This is the tip of your nose. And on the sides, you see the L of the nose and the openings are the nostrils or anterior nasal apertures. And the lower edge of the nasal septum, which is covered by the skin, is called as columella, right? And we know that the lateral part of your lower nose is made up of fine pro fatty tissue covered by the skin and we know that your nose consists of various bones various cartilages and of course covered by the skin so let's move now you can see that we have to learn about the nose and the contribution of various bones and cartilages this is the nasal bone this is the frontal bone that articulates with the nasal bone and this is the maxilla through its frontal process. This blue color is the septal cartilage. This is the lateral cartilage. And this is the major alar cartilage. These are the minor alar cartilages. And this area is being covered by the fibro fatty tissue. And all of this, of course, being wrapped up by the skin. Okay. This is the frontal bone through nasal process. These are the two nasal bones and these are the maxilla through their frontal processes, right? And the blue color are the cartilages. These are the upper one and these are the lower. Okay, in this view, what do you see? You can see that this blue color are the lateral cartilages. In the middle, the septal cartilage. That makes a curtain-like separation in the two nasal cavities. And you see the lateral crux of major this alar cartilages and these are the minor or lesser alar cartilages, right? Now, we will now move towards the, you would say, nasal septum to observe the formation of the medial wall of your nose. So, see, from above, you can see this is the frontal bone right okay now you can observe that there is the nasal bone right a little bit posteriorly you can observe this is the ethmoidal bone whose perpendicular plate takes part in the medial wall just below it you can observe this is the septal cartilage okay and posterior inferiorly, there is another bone which is called as vomer. This is an independent bone. Okay, what other features we can observe here? This is the sphenoidal sinus. This is the pituitary fossa. We can observe here. Okay, and just below, this is the maxillary bone. Okay, right. So, this is how you can observe that the medial wall of the nose is being formed. This is a beautiful diagram to show you the concept of the nasal cavity. These are the anterior nasal aperture or nares and this purple color partition that is dividing it into two parts. This is the nasal septum and from here you can well observe that this could be the roof of your nose. Okay. And the posterior aspect you can observe as a posterior wall. And the in between that purple which is formed by the nasal septum is forming the medial wall. Okay, on its both sides that lateral aspect is making the lateral wall. And of course the floor of your nose is formed by the help of hard palate. And this hard palate is formed by the contribution of the maxilla bone and the horizontal plate of palatine bone. Okay, now move towards the next view. 
Now clearly, again we will recall the medial wall or nasal septum. So now you can see this is the nasal bone and move posteriorly we observe that there is the nasal spine part of the frontal bone. Now this hole is the ethmoidal bone and this pink color is its perpendicular plate of ethmoid bone. Just antero inferior to it, this is the septal cartilage. Okay, and posterior inferiorly, you can absorb the vomer bone. Right now, you can see the floor that is formed by the heart pellet, and this heart pellet is formed by the palatine bones and the maxillary bone. Okay. Now we will learn about the blood supply of your medial wall. So there lies from the anterior and superior aspect the anterior ethmoidal artery that is coming down to supply the medial wall and there lies the posterior ethmoidal artery as well. Okay, now see these anterior posterior ethmoidal arteries, these are the branches of ophthalmic artery right and again the ophthalmic artery is coming from the internal carotid artery okay now what else you would see that near the lip you can observe the facial artery that is giving rise to superior labial artery that is also coming near the vestibule of your nose to take part in this blood supply okay now blood supply of the medial wall that is through the anterior ethmoidal and posterior ethmoidal arteries and these are the branches of ophthalmic artery and this ophthalmic artery comes from the internal carotid artery. Now you see that there are various other branches near the lip. You can see that the facial artery give rise to superior labial artery that also near the vestibule of your nose contributes in the medial wall blood supply and of course the castle back plexus is being completed with the help of these vessels. Now you can see that there lies the sphenopalatine artery and the greater palatine artery. They are coming as a branches of the maxillary artery and what maxillary artery? It is the branch of external carotid artery, right? Okay. Now we have to learn about the nerve supply of medial wall again of the same name that anterior ethmoidal nerve through various nasal branches and the posterior ethmoidal nerve and from where they come. They come from the ophthalmic division of the trigeminal which is the fifth cranial nerve. They are carrying the general sensations which are touch pain and temperature right. They are also major contributory nerves for your medial wall. And then of course posterior inferiorly you can observe the nasopalatine nerve and the greater palatine nerve right and these are the branches coming from the pterygopalatine ganglion and that ganglion is related to your maxillary nerve again maxillary nerve is a part of the trigeminal nerve right the fifth cranial nerve so this is how you get the nerve supply of the medial wall okay now there is an important thing which we mentioned earlier that there lies the castle back area which is highlighted in this reddish circle now you can see again the same vessels that splice the medial wall contribute here to give well vascularity and we expect the epistaxis related to your pathological condition of the nose. So you can see the anterior ethmoidal and posterior ethmoidal vessels, the sphenopalatine artery and the greater palatine artery and anteriorly the septal branch of superior labial artery that comes from the facial artery. They all contribute to this castle back area. Okay. Now we will see the lateral wall of the nose. It is divided into three parts. This is the anterior part that is made up by the vestibule of the nose. Now this is the middle part that is uh, formed 
by the atria of the middle meatus right this is a hollow area just anterior to various meatuses and the posterior part which is being covered up by various meatuses and concha right this is how your lateral wall of the nose is divided okay now the lateral wall see this is the vestibule okay and this is the atrium of the middle meatus and these are various conchas the superior concha the middle concha and the inferior concha these are the bony projections being covered up by the mucosa to increase the surface area and just below there lies various openings called as superior meatus middle meatus and the inferior meatus and in next diagram coming diagram we will learn which structures open in these meatuses concentrate that above the superior concha we have got sphenoethmoidal recess so this is the sphenoidal air sinus right so there is the sphenoethmoidal recess in between to communicate among these two right okay now in the same picture you can now see this is the medial wall and this is the lateral wall they are totally different now we have to separately recall them and learn them just revise the medial wall that is a curtain in between the two nostrils this is being formed by the nasal bone the ethmoidal bone through its perpendicular plate then we have got septal cartilage this is the vomer right so these structures we will learn along with the medial wall right now what bones are here this is the medial pterygoid plate and this is the lateral pterygoid plate right and this is the heart palate formed as a floor of your nose now comes towards the lateral wall now you see the nasal bone above this is the frontal bone that carries the frontal air sinus in it okay now you see various nasal cartilages in blue now this is the maxillary maxillary bone this is its frontal process now you see various conchas the superior concha and the middle concha they are the part of the ethmoid bone so that is why this is being shown in the green color so ethmoid bone has got various parts right this is this horizontally placed area is called as cribriform plate of ethmoid the superior and the middle concha they are also the part of ethmoid bone and medially you can observe the perpendicular plate is also a part of ethmoid bone okay come downwards in a blue color this is the inferior concha this is a separate bone right let me enlarge and show you the superior and the middle concha and this is the inferior concha and what else we see we see that this is the perpendicular plate of palatine bone okay just posterior to it is the medial pterygoid the this is the perpendicular plate shown in red color and this is the horizontal plate of palatine bone right and this is the part of maxilla so this is how we see the floor and the lateral wall okay again just as a repeat and let me tell you that the nasal bone the frontal process of maxilla and just uh, below it a light blue color is the lacrimal bone then you observe various concha uh, that are also taking part in the lateral wall and labyrinth of ethmoid bone that forms the ethmoidal air sinus right then comes the inferior nasal concha then the perpendicular plate of palatine bone and the medial pterygoid plate this is a part of sphenoid bone that is why the sphenoid bone is also having the same color and having the sphenoidal air sinus right so this is how we learn about the lateral wall okay now there is another very good diagram to show you that we have got the frontal bone with the frontal air sinuses then we see the green color ethmoidal bone the blue one is nasal bone 
and uh, the inferior concha is shown in the different color then we see the maxilla which is its bony part right and then the palatine bone it's a horizontal portion and this is the perpendicular plate and this is the medial and lateral pterygoid plates of uh, this bone right see not now see the lateral wall of the nose receives various sinuses in its meatuses. So, this is the superior meatus below the superior concha. This is the middle meatus below the middle concha. This is the inferior meatus below the inferior concha. Now, see this is the frontal bone carrying the frontal air sinuses. This is the sphenoid bone carrying the sphenoidal air sinus. And we have got the ethmoidal bone having the anterior, middle and posterior air sinuses, right? Now, see that above the superior concha, we have got the opening of sphenoidal air sinus. This is a place called the opening in sphenoethmoidal recess, right? Okay. Just in the superior meatus, we have got only one sinus that opens here is the posterior ethmoidal sinus right this one okay now concentrate this middle meatus that receives so many sinuses in it there is the area half moon shape called as hiatus semi lunaris that has got the opening of frontal air sinus and posterior to it is the anterior ethmoidal sinus then we have got an elevated area called as ethmoidal bulla or bulla ethmoidal it is receiving the maxillary air sinus which is in the maxilla bone right and the middle ethmoidal sinus right okay now comes towards the inferior meatus that is below the inferior concha it receives only the nasolacrimal duct in it okay now through the help of various arrows now you can see this yellow color is the hiatus semilunaris for the opening of frontal, maxillary and anterior ethmoidal sinus, right? Okay, just superior to it, there is ethmoidal bulla that is showing the opening of middle ethmoidal sinus. Okay, just above or superior to it, we have got sphenoethmoidal recess and this arrow is showing the opening from the sphenoidal sinus towards it. Now see below the inferior concha there lies the arrow that shows the opening of nasolacrimal duct and most posteriorly the posterior part of the nasopharynx is showing the opening of the auditory tube or the eustachian tube here. Okay now we have to now learn about the blood supply of lateral wall of your nose. Here the anterior ethmoidal vessels or anterior ethmoidal arteries and posterior ethmoidal arteries, they are going to supply your lateral wall of the nose as well. And you know they are coming from the ophthalmic artery of the internal carotid artery. Now most posteriorly you can observe the sphenopalatine artery and uh, here you can get the greater palatine artery. They are coming from the maxillary artery which is a branch of external carotid artery. And again from the external carotid, we see the facial artery that gives the uh, various branches, lateral nasal branches that takes part in the supply of the lateral wall of your nose. There is another important thing in this view of the nose in which you do remember that the sense of olfaction is also performed by your nose. So upper one third of your nasal mucosa is covered by the olfactory epithelium right and lower two-third is being covered by the respiratory mucosa and the respiratory epithelium lies it so the upper olfactory region is being supplied by the special nerve cranial nerve the olfactory nerve its rootlets are which originates from here from the neuroepithelial cells of the olfactory epithelium and they are combining to form the olfactory nerve and then they pass it through the cribriform plate of ethmoid to form the olfactory bulb right so this 
first cranial of is concerned with your sense of smell then you see that there lies the nasociliary nerve that comes downwards and the nasopalatine nerve is also there to supply okay again in a repeat then th model nerve this is th model nerve and it also gives branches called as internal nasal branches and a little bit most posterior region you get the pterygopalatine ganglion in the pterygopalatine fossa to supply various branches for your nose right okay just in a repeat you can observe the olfactory bulb and the olfactory nerves this is up to the level of superior concha right then you observe the nth model nerve that supplies along with its external nasal branch towards your nose and you observe near the sphenopalatine foramen that the posterior superior lateral nasal nerves they come out then below it you get the posterior inferior lateral nasal nerve right and at the lower edge you get the superior alveolar nerve that gives the nasal branches and the infraorbital nerve also contributes via internal nasal branches okay so thank you very much